It's a beautiful day here, so welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Friday, November 12th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Demain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com, so go there and feast yourself with some news, and here are the news stories from the day. From the Associated Press and other Native News sources, the chairman of the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Council has announced the appointment of a casino executive as CEO of the company that owns Foxwoods Resort Casino. Scott Butera was president and chief executive of the Los Angeles-based Tropicana Entertainment, Inc. Rodney Butler, chairman of the Eastern Connecticut Indian Council, announced Butera's appointment as head of the Mashantucket Pequot Gaming Enterprises on November 11th. Butera succeeds William Sherlock, who was named interim president in June of this year. Prosecutors want a former suspect in the killing of American Indian Movement member Anna May Pick to Aquash to testify at another suspect's upcoming trial, but a lawyer for Richard Marshall, Dana Hanna, says prosecutors are trying to trap his client into perjury charges. Marshall was found not guilty earlier this year on charges he provided the gun that killed the uh, anime pick to Aquash and was acquitted despite overwhelming evidence that AIM kidnappers had Aquash at his home an hour or two before she was executed. Marshall has consistently pled the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination and refused to take the stand in his own defense. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley says Marshall should have to testify in the trail, uh, trial of John Graham who faces murder charges in connection with Aquash's 1975 execution. A state judge is expected to decide later this month if Marshall has to testify. Graham's trial is scheduled to begin November 29th. Governor Bill Richardson has called on a handful of state agencies to help expand protections for a small lake near the New Mexico-Arizona border that is held sacred by tribes throughout the region. Richardson signed an executive order that spells out the additional protections that tribal officials and traditional leaders of the Zuni Pueblo had long been, seek long been seeking. The order was signed during a ceremony at the Pueblo that was attended by hundreds of people. For decades, the the Zuni Salt Lake, nestled in the high desert of western New Mexico, has been threatened by proposed coal mining as well as oil, natural gas, and water development. Richard said he's concerned that water withdrawals and other activities in the area could upset the lake's delicate hydrological balance. And now we go to Arizona where we're going to talk with correspondent Patty Talahunga, who is at the American Indian Science and Engineering Conference. Patty Talahungba, you are at the American Indian Science and Engineering Conference somewhere in North America. Would you tell us where you're at and what's going on today? We are in the land of enchantment in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is the 32nd annual conference for ACES, the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. And actually, Paul, I was um, brought here to host the opening ceremony last night and also the closing ceremony tomorrow night. But a lot of people may be familiar with ACES in Indian Country and what it provides for students who are going into uh, science and engineering. But what I'm hearing at this conference in particular is a lot of the behavioral sciences that are um, also a part of ACES but may not get all the play that um, the uh, more hardcore technical engineering and science uh, fields get. So a good cross mix of uh, people here. And it's just it's really uh, amazing to see the work that they do with high school students, even grade school students, of course college, and then graduate students and the, of the professional people who are here as well. When we talk about behavioral sciences, we're talking about uh, things like what, sci psychology and... and yes. Tell me a little... And also, okay, yes. tell, tell me a little bit about what, what that difference is, what you're seeing there, the diversity in, in, in the issues. And, and, t and then tell me what the topic, uh, topic of your presentation last night was. Well, <laughs> the topic of the presentation last night was actually um, emceeing the event for the, uh, for the opening ceremonies and looking oh. at all, all of the people who they were honoring, their top sponsors and the student chapters and such. Now, I will tell you this, chapter, or Region 3 won the Spirit Award, and that's a student chapter and professional chapter who represent ACES nationally. Um, in the Region 3 includes Arizona, which, you know, of course, I'm from there. But they shouted the loudest, they cheered the loudest, and they won the spirit stick for this year. So that was exciting to be on stage for that. 
But uh, among some of the uh, presenters last night was um, the first African-American astronaut, Dr. May C. Jemison. And she now has her own company, but the woman was phenomenal in her career. You know, she's obviously still going strong and working very hard. But um, not only is she an astronaut, but she's a medical doctor, she's a professor, she has practiced medicine on three continents, and of course has gone up into space. So she, her presentation was pretty amazing and very in, uh, enlightening and also very motivating to the students, I think, and even other professionals in not setting a limit to what you can do and going as far as you can even to outer space in your career. And that's what is amazing to me at ACES is that you have all these people of such high caliber here mixing and mingling with the students who are in high school. I've met several high school students who are here just to explore because they have an idea of maybe a science or math or some sort of a, a career that they might may like to uh, go into. And this is a place for them to really explore that. There's so many different con uh, contests going on as well at the college level. And everywhere you look, there's something interesting. You know, the, and even their sessions, there's a session tomorrow called Worming Your Way Into Science and looking at that kind of, of uh, um, uh, uh, science itself, you know, looking at ecosystems and looking at all the, the tiniest forms of life and how we all fit together. And I'm not kidding. I just I feel I feel like I'm getting smarter just walking around in this area because there there are true rocket scientists here. <laughs> Maybe it'll rub off on you. I hope so. I I, I I'm I'm uh, hoping that it will. <laughs> Thirty two years ago, this organization had its first conference. Was there more than a dozen American Indians at that conference? Do you know? Any? I have interviewed some of the founders, and that's a really good point because there were probably just around if, if that many um, people around the country who were into science and engineering. And one of them was Jerry Elliott, who was a founder of ACES, and he uh, worked at NASA. And Jerry's, he, he had a tremendous impact at NASA in that he was able to help figure out how to bring the crew from Apollo 13 back home safely. And of course, the movie Apollo 13 chronicles that uh, just terrifying uh, event at NASA, and Jerry uh, is one of the people who actually figured that out. And um, he's a founding member of ACES. And so today you look around and you see so many uh, professional people and also students who are here, and it really gives you a hope that um, that there is going to be a major impact, not just today, but continuing on in the future with Native people going into these very important fields to help protect our lands, to help protect our, our water, our air, everything. And um, today, in fact, ACES actually signed a memorandum of agreement with the U.S. Forest Service in the Southwestern District. And that was a, a big deal this morning because that really solidifies the relationship. And the Southwestern region covers Arizona and New Mexico and parts of Texas and Oklahoma, the western parts of those states. And so they're looking at um, continuing this relationship and also helping to get the word out on things like internships. And that's one thing that I was very impressed with here is that a lot of the internships are paid internships and paid very nicely in all different fields with not just uh, universities but actual uh, companies like um, the U.S. Forest Service. So a lot of opportunity here for uh, Native students to take advantage of that and then to get a career once they get uh, once they graduate with their degrees and also advance degrees. My impression would be for the general public and maybe even for Indian country that there would be a lot of people that were surprised that American Indians are even in science and engineering. And yet the domestication of corn, the irrigation systems of some of the civilizations out in the southwest there in terms of water transportation and conservation, uh, the model of the dome house and the teepee and the structural designs that's going into canoes. There's a lot of intricate type of things there that people are looking in. And you said something about behavioral sciences. Let's look at a Dikanagan or a cradle board and, and how that served. Do you find some uh, workshops dealing with traditional engineering and science concepts that are being brought into the present tense? Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because one thing unique to ACES is they have, as, as, as opposed to other native, uh, professional native organizations, ACES has a council of elders. And these are people they pick from around the country who um, are steeped in their traditional knowledge and to come here to ACES. And later today they will be holding talking circles because um, when you think about some of these uh, fields that students are going into, 
some of them are, you know, well, a lot of them are pretty heavy duty. And so how do you deal with that in your daily life? Maybe something conflicts with your traditional teachings. The Council of Elders is there to help you understand how to bridge that gap, how to work within an area that you're interested in, but maybe challenging to your traditional belief systems. So the Council of Elders has been established for a long time, and it really is nice. They mingle with the students, with, with the college uh, students, with the professional people, and they are a major part of the conference. And so it's really nice to see that our elders are being recognized, and their knowledge, and our, the, our ancestral knowledge, our indigenous knowledge as Native people is being recognized. You mentioned the teepee. One of Jerry Elliott's stories is that the teepee is so perfectly di uh, aerodynamically um, uh, constructed that the wind comes up and flows off the teepee. You can't tip that teepee over. And when he first brought this to my attention, I was like, wow, that's very interesting. But it's so true that that that, that, that cause took um, knowledge of, of physics, it took knowledge of um, geometry, you know, architecture, everything in order for uh, our native people to build those TVs and make that something that can't, you know, the wind can't topple over. And, um, and then it goes into other areas, like whether you're looking at um, astronomy or whether you're looking at um, food itself, you know, you mentioned the domestication of corn, you know, that type of thing. So there's a lot of uh, very uh, much cultural knowledge um, as a part of the uh, program here at ACES. And so they look at indigenous knowledge and they understand that taking the uh, educational, the Western educational model system, getting those advanced degrees will get you into these companies where then you can make a difference. And that's one thing that uh, Pamela Silas, the CEO of ACES mentioned when they signed the MOU with the Forest Service, is that who better to entrust our land to than Native people who know their traditions and know the importance of keeping that land protected. Yeah, looks like a full crowd there, people walking back and forth with tags on and all that stuff. Uh, is Are they having a record crowd there this year? Actually, attendance is up. I think attendance was almost uh, 1,700, 1,800 people. So that's uh, up from the previous years. And um, yes, it, it's pretty packed. They're happy with the turnout here. And um, they're looking forward to next year, which is going to be in Minneapolis. And there, with a lot of indigenous people, the rice, uh, wild rice um, gathering and the concern about uh, genetically modified foods, their uh, theme next year is food for thought. That's a nice slogan. I like that. Patty, we should check back in with you again a little bit. You'll be there over the weekend, the next couple of days. Maybe we can get a report from you uh, next week sometime as well. Okay, yes, it wraps up tomorrow, and um, there is a, a, a banquet tomorrow evening. And, um, you know, to also give you an idea, these Indians, no matter where you take, go with Indian people, we have our sense of humor. So one of the things I thought was hilarious here is um, they have, you know, at a conference you have a whole list of badges of how important you are whether you're a speaker or presenter or whatever. Well, here they have badges like Math Maven, um, Troublemaker. Uh, what else did I see? You know, funny things that pertain to their, to their line of work. But uh, so we've got PhDs walking around with something like a, a sticker or a badge saying Troublemaker. Um, and I love it. I think it's really great. And I, I will leave you with one quick joke because uh, I told a journalism joke last night. Of course, you have to, always have to make fun of your own career, right? So the uh, joke from uh, Dr. Jemison was, uh, what's the difference between civil engineers and mechanical engineers? What? Mechanical engineers build weapons. Civil engineers build targets. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> we'll talk to you again. Patty, thanks for joining with us today in the Native News Update. Thank you, Paul. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Thanks for joining with us. Come back again soon. Miigwech.